In today's video, I'm going to do my long overdue full CPU optimization guide. And guys, I'm pretty sure that you're all aware in laptops, the biggest performance killer is heat. So I'm going to show you how to reduce your CPU usage, how to reduce your RAM usage, and how to reduce your temperatures. How? I'm going to start with the juicy stuff up front. If you've got a laptop with a lock BIOS, I'm going to show you how to unlock your BIOS so you can unlock undervolting or at the very least unlock turbo ratio limiting throttle stop. So guys, sit down, strap in, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, before we get started, I'm just going to need you to go to this video's description. Just click on the link provided there. That's going to be for my Google Drive for my C or CPU optimizations. Just go ahead and download the Bits and Highs Performance Power Plan. It's the same as the Ultimate Performance Power Plan. It's just easier to install if you don't have it on your computer. Just download the C++ packages. It's it, good for all games. And then also you might need it to run certain programs. This is the command line. I typed out the overclocking lock and CFG lock for 10th generation, 11th generation, 12th generation and 13th generation to make the unlocking of undervolting a lot quicker and simpler for you guys. Um, DirectX web setup, you can download that. Don't worry about game DVR registry tweaks. The grab, this allows you to boot into the grab menu. It's a file used to modify your BIOS, change your overclocking lock from zero, no, from times one to times zero, which unlocks undervolting. So it modifies your bar. So all these files and folders are gonna say potentially harmful. Um, do you wanna proceed with download? It's because of the Grab X64, it's completely safe. It's just something that modifies your bars. That's why it's gonna come up as unsafe. Don't stress about it. Inspector, download that. Install power plan. Intelligent standby list cleaner, download that. Latest is Windows Privacy Dashboard. We're gonna use that to further optimize our Windows settings. But I'll get that to I'll get to that later. This is just a screenshot of when you boot into the grab menu in your BIOS. This is what it's going to look like after you enter the commands, just to give you uh, some more clarity. And then throttle stop. I'm sure most of you guys already have throttle stop installed. If you don't, this is quite a good version of throttle stop. It's not the latest, but I like this the look of this version. And then when Air Two, we're going to use to further modify windows settings which are going to affect the ram and the cpu but at that let's get to step number one. Oh wait before we do that once you download that it's going to be in your downloads folder obviously just create a cpu optimization folder on your desktop and then everything that you've downloaded just cut that out your downloads folder and then paste into cpu optimization and then it's going to look like this and now we're ready to get to step number one. Right guys, that's gonna bring us to step number one, unlocking undervolting in the BIOS. If you can already unvault, just skip to step number two. But for those of you that can't undervolt and you wanna unlock undervolting, this step is for you guys. If you've got a ninth generation and older CPU, in the description of the video, I'm actually gonna link the full video where I show you how to unlock undervolting because uh, for ninth generation older, the overclocking lock and CFG lock is not standardized across the generation. So you're gonna have to find your individual overclocking and CFG lock. So just click on that video. But if you have a 10th generation and newer CPU, overclocking lock and CFG lock is standardized across the generation. So go to CPU optimization folder, just drag command line for 10th to 13th gen to the desktop. Just drag, grab X64 to the desktop, and then just grab the screenshot to the desktop. So guys, let me just show you what this is all about. So command line. So for 10th generation, standardized across the whole generation, your overclocking lock is 0xDA, and your CFG lock is 0 times 3E. For 11th generation, standardized across the entire generation, your overclocking lock is 0 times DF, and your CFG lock is 0 times 4.3. For 12th and 13th generation, standard, standardized across both generations, your overclocking lock is 0 times 10E, and your CFG lock is 0 times 
four three. And then these are the commands you're going to put in the in the grab menu, but we'll get to that step a little bit later. So guys, what I'm going to need you to do is get a USB drive, and it has to be 32 gigs or smaller. Just plug it into your into your laptop, and then once it's installed or once it's in your laptop, just go ahead and select it, and we're going to format it. So obviously it's going to get rid of all the the contents of your of your USB. So just make sure there's nothing that you don't want to lose. So just go ahead and format it. Make sure it's in FAT32, and then start the format. And then this is going to take a couple of seconds. Format complete. Once the format is complete, go into your USB folder, and then just create a new folder. And sorry, I'm typing with one hand here. So just type, make the folder name EFI. And then in EFI, create a new folder. And you're going to call this boot. And in boot, what you're going to do is you're going to cut the grub x64 paste. And then you're just going to rename this boot x64 uh, 64 dot efi so just to just to uh, confirm it's you're going to create the efi folder all caps in that folder you're going to create a boot folder and then you're going to create a boot x64 dot efi so now that we've created the the bootable usb before you boot into the bios if you're on windows 11 Undervolting since 22H2 will be blocked if core isolation in Windows is enabled. So just go to search, type in core isolation and just make sure that core isolation is disabled. Then boot to your BIOS and disable a virtualization in your BIOS. For Dell, um, for Dell laptops, it's going to say Dell support. Just disable virtualization technology not the second option a, a virtualization technology direct input for asus laptops disable vtx in the bios do not disable vtd and then also disable secure boot once you've done that just boot back into windows and when then with your usb plugged into your laptop I want you to go to the little Windows icon over here and then you're going to go to settings, update and security and now what we're going to do is we're going to boot into the grub menu and uh, so to boot into the grub menu you go to recovery, you go to advanced restart, restart and then boot off your USB. Once you boot off your USB it's going to boot you into the grub menu and then once you're in the grub menu if you're on 11th genera uh, if you're on 10th generation you're going to put in uh, these commands over here if you're on 11th generation you're going to put in uh, these commands over here and if you're on 12th or 13th generation you're going to put these commands in so what you're going to do let's say you're in the grab menu for 10th generation you're just going to type setup underscore var space CPU setup space 0xda space 0 times 0 hit enter and then you're going to type setup underscore var space CPU setup space 0 times 3e space 0 times 0 so what we're doing there and hit enter what we've done there is we've changed the overclocking lock from 1 to 0 so it's off and yeah, we've changed this CFG lock from 1 to 0. Now it's off. And then to boot out of the grab menu, all you're going to do is press the power button and then power button again to boot into Windows. And then when you go into throttle stop, you'll notice that undervolting is unlocked. Um, guys, just quick thing. For 12th generation CPUs, this doesn't unlock undervolting. What it does unlock is uh, in th uh, uh, turbo ratio limits in throttle stop for 12th generation undervolting is just not possible unless you have hk or hx processor but 
since uh, the latest microcode update, I believe that undervolting is even disabled in those processes. So for 12th and 11th generation, this is just going to unlock turbo ratio limits. For 10th, 11th, 9th, 8th generation, this will unlock undervolting. And as you can see, I'm nice and undervolted. So once you, uh, once you complete those steps, that's going to bring us to step number two. And I'm going to show you the best settings in Throttle Stop. Right guys, that brings us to step number two, the correct settings to put into throttle stop to reduce temperatures. Because quite often you're going to find you put in an undervolt and it doesn't change your temperature. So there are a couple of extra tweaks that you need to do to reduce those temperatures. So for those of you that um, don't have throttle stop, just go to the CPU optimization folder, just extract throttle stop and then uh, open the program if it's your first time opening it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you a warning message just saying that Throttle Stop is a dangerous program. Be careful. So just click OK. Open up Throttle Stop. First thing, guys, if for heaven's sakes, if it says turn on over here, it means Throttle Stop is off. So just go and click turn on so it says turn off. When it says turn off, it means Throttle Stop is on. It's confusing, I know. And then BD Pro Shot, just untick BD Pro Shot, untick C1E. C1E is a power saving feature. BD Pro Shot is the ceiling that you set for your temperatures on in throttle stop. But I'm going to show you how to reduce those temperatures so you don't need BD Pro Shot. Yay! And then once those two are unselected, just click save. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go into Fiverr. And then for CPU core, just make sure unlock adjustable voltage is ticked. For CPU cache, just make sure unlock adjustable voltage is ticked. And then in the bottom right hand corner here, just select OK save voltages immediately. Click apply. Right, so first what we're going to do is apply the undervolt. And we're going to push the undervolt until our computer starts being unstable. And then once we've gotten to the point where the computer is unstable, then we're going to go up back up one step to where the computer was still stable so to do that what you're going to do for cpu core and i reckon i've got mine set to minus 155 millivolts and for my cache i've got mine set to minus 99.6 millivolts so but to just to start off with start off with minus 70 millivolts on cpu core minus 70 millivolts on cpu cache Hit apply, and then what you're going to do here is you're going to go to TS Bench, and you're going to set this to 960M because you want a nice long test, and then just start TS Bench, and just make sure it doesn't say error. Run it for about a minute or two. If it doesn't say error, it means it's stable. Then what you're going to do is we're going to push our undervolt further. So for CPU core, you're going to go down by 20 millivolts to, uh, from minus 70 to minus 90. CPU cache. Just go down to minus 90 as well. Apply. Okay. TS bench. Set it to 960M. Make sure it runs for about a minute or two without saying error. And if it runs for about a minute or two without saying error, it's stable. Then yet again, we're going to repeat the process. And just keep on uh, keep on repeating that process. But CPU core. Every time it's stable, push it down by about 15 to 20 millivolts. CPU cache. Don't go beyond minus 99.6 uh, uh, offset voltage because if you leave your CPU cache to a lower offset, you can push your CPU core to a further offset. So guys, just keep on repeating that process, um, pushing your, your, your undervolt further and in TS Bench doing a 960M test. And if it, runs, if it runs fine for about a minute or two without saying error, it's fine. As soon as it says error, you know that you've come to the limit and you can't undervolt any further. Then what you're going to do, you're going to go to your previous settings and you're going to go to your previous settings in Fiverr. Just put your previous settings under offset voltage. So let's say it crashed at minus 155 millivolts, uh, but the previous test you did was at minus 145 millivolts and you ran it for a minute, it didn't crash. Just apply minus 145 and then apply and then you've set your undervolt and now we're going to move on to adjusting turbo ratio limits. Because in the newer CPUs, um, applying an undervolt 
doesn't really affect your, your temperatures, you have to change turbo ratio limits as well. So what I want you to do is once you've already found your, your stable undervolt, what I want you to do is go to uh, TS Bench and I want you to run TS Bench, just do a, a short 120, 120M test and watch your, watch your FID. Um, within the first five to sec 10 seconds, it should drop. If it drops, if it starts dropping, let's say at 38, what I, that means your, your CPU is throttling at 3.8 gigahertz. What you're gonna do then is you're gonna come back to Fiverr and you're gonna adjust your turbo ratio limits to 38. And once you adjust it to 38, apply of all cores, apply, and then go uh, come to TS Bench again, run the test, and if it still drops, what I want you to do is go back to uh, Fiverr and then th set it to 37. And if on 37 it's stable and it doesn't drop, that me means that your temperatures are gonna be lower and you're not gonna be experiencing thermal throttling and you're gonna get your temperature, temperatures will go down quite substantially. And that is how you apply uh, undervolt and adjust turbo ratio limits to drop the temperatures in throttle stop. On to the next step. Right guys, for step number three, and this is quite a short one, don't worry. What you're gonna do is we're just gonna run updates and then we're gonna pause it. So go to the Windows settings over here, update and security, Windows update, and then just run updates, just let it run through, do all the updates. And then what you wanna do, once the updates are complete, obviously your computer's gonna start a couple of times. Once your updates are complete, just click pause updates for seven days until it grays out. And the reason you do this is Windows Update, if you don't pause it, it constantly runs in the background and it consumes CPU resources. So just go ahead and do your updates and pause for seven days and just click it until it grays out. That's step number three. Right, for step number four, we're gonna be installing a power plan and then optimizing for best settings. So just go to the CPU optimization folder Guys, if you already got a high performance power plan or ultimate performance, it's no different. But I find that for some people on the new windows, you only have the ba balanced power plan. So this step is for you guys. So just drag bit some highest performance POW to the, to the desktop and then install power plan um, batch file over here. And now what you're gonna do is just go to your C drive Go to users and find out what your username is. So mine is Justin G15. So just edit this batch file. Just click on run. And what you're going to do is now mine is Justin G15. So I'm going to change administrator to Justin G15. Sorry, I'm typing with one hand here. Yeah? Okay. So for you, just change it to whatever your username is and then save. So now, um, when I run this, it's gonna install the bits and highest performance power plan. So just go ahead and run as administrator. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna get rid of your balanced power plan and it's gonna install the bits and highest performance power plan. Guys, this is very much like ultimate performance. In fact, there's no performance difference whatsoever the only reason i have this power plan is because ultimate performance on certain devices is an absolute pain to install and but some highest performance is much easier and it's exactly the same performance so then what you're going to do is go to plan change plan settings just make sure all these options are never 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 and then click save changes and then change advanced power settings so it, guys if you don't have all these options available so if you don't have wireless adapter settings if you don't have usb settings if you don't have pci express or you don't have mini minimum cooling policy or system cooling policy what you can do and i'll provide a link in the description what you can do is okay i'll provide a link and that link is going to bring you to 10 forums and in 10 forums you just scroll down and yeah, you'll see add or remove maximum processor frequency in Windows. 
add or remove maximum processor state from power options in Windows, add or add processor performance increase threshold, add or remove system cooling policy, and then here we go, add or remove maximum processor frequency in Windows, add or remove maximum processor state in power options, add processor performance uh, increase threshold, add or remove system cooling policy. And those are the only ones I think that you're going to be needing. So what you do is just click on any of those. So let's say you want to add system cooling policy. So you just click on that. And then you'll see add or remove system cooling policy. So to add, you just copy this. You just copy that. And then you press the Windows key in R. And then you type in CMD, boom. And then you just go paste and hit enter. And now what you'll see, I've already, I already had it in there, but now what you'll see is in advanced power settings, you didn't have system cooling policy earlier, just for example, it will add system cooling policy there. So just to go through the settings, and I'll add, those, uh, I'll add that link in the description of the video. So for base settings, while adapter settings, uh, power saving mode, put on maximum performance, maximum performance, sleep, sleep after, never, never. And then USB settings, under USB selective, just put disabled, disabled. PCI Express, link state, power management, just off and off. And then process of power management, just make sure it's on 100 and 100. System cooling policy, just make sure it's active and active. And then maximum processor state, just make it 100 and 100. And then on display, turn off display after, guess it. Never, never. Okay, and then once it's done, just hit apply, press OK. And we are done with step number four. All right, guys, for step number five, we're going to be just optimizing the window settings. So what I want you to do is just go to the one this icon here, go to settings. And now we're going to optimize this just to reduce the processes, etc., etc., on the CPU. So update and security, we've already done Windows update, delivery optimization, just make sure it's off. Windows security, I have Windows Defender disabled, you don't have to do that. Um, I'll show you if you really want to, but in this day and age, just leave Windows Defender on. Backup, nothing to do, uh, troubleshoot, nothing to do, recovery, nothing. Activation, yeah, you can leave this section as is. Under privacy, and this is an important one, I've already used um, Win, uh, Windows Privacy Dashboard, so most of my settings are already off. So I'll just show you what you need to do here. This is all, this is how Microsoft collects your data and sends it off to the to be sold. So what you want to do is you want to limit Microsoft's ability to collect your data. So we're going to switch off all the settings here with the exception of microphone and camera. Everything else is going to go off. So in general, just make sure everything's off. Speech off, inking off, diagnostics and feedback off, activity history off. And then the only things that you don't want to touch is camera. Just leave it as is. Microphone leave as is because it can be quite buggy sometimes. And then the rest of these options over here, background apps definitely want to switch it off just go through all these settings just switch off everything in there guys because you don't need windows collecting any of your data um, and then in search just make sure that because we naughty just make sure that a, a, a certain that safe search is just off don't filter adult content because you don't want you don't want to be stopped from doing anything in windows Okay, this just sounds awkward. <laughs> yeah, switch off Microsoft account, switch off work and school account. History, just switch it off and then clear device search history. Searching Windows, what you want to do in here is, is yeah, advanced search in the indexing settings. Okay, now I'm actually going to show you something else that you can do, which is better for that. Um, okay, and that's going to bring us to ease of access. Display, I don't think there's much to do here. Just leave this mouse pointer. You can go to additional mouse settings. And this isn't really a CPU optimization, but 
for additional mouse options just go to pointer options and just make certain that enhance pointer precision is off because that's mouth mouse smoothing you don't need that it makes your it, does, it makes your mouse feel weird so just go ahead and switch that off apply close and then for touchpad yeah you can input your settings here this doesn't really affect anything just put input whatever you want typing i switch all of these off pen and uh, i switch everything off there but there's nothing to switch off or to play i really don't use that feature in fact i even disable the service i just switch everything off there and in usb i switch everything off right and then yeah so just go through these settings over here there's not much to do there gaming this is an important one xbox game bar switch off captures nothing to do game mode just make sure it's switched on and then graphic settings what you can do uh, i need to change a couple of things in here actually just go and browse and select your your game your game executable just put it in here and then options put it to our performance okay and what is uh, if you have a hardware accelerator gpu scheduling avail available just make sure that's switched on it can boost your your gp uh, your your gaming performance by a couple of percent um uh, nothing to do yeah time and language that's your baby accounts that's your baby i'm not going to touch anything there apps okay so this is an important one guys because if you're on windows 11 most of you are going to install windows 11 with an online microsoft account and what happens when you install with an online account and not a local account windows installs a shitload of bloatware so guys it, just go through all these um everything over here um anything that you don't use you want to actually just click on it and uninstall it but you don't want to uninstall notepad plus plus i'm just showing for example so if it's not something that you use actively and you know you don't ever use it just get rid of it because it's actually just occupying space on your hard drive and it's slowing things down you don't need it off offline maps um offline maps just make sure everything is okay i've actually deleted this section uh no i didn't actually meet just switch everything off here you don't need to automatically update maps i mean unless you're using your computer to to drive uh yeah you don't need this apps or websites nothing to the uh video playback i just always put this on optimize for video quality start up just disable everything yeah you don't need windows to automatically start any of these things in the background because when you open it yourself you can use it you don't need windows to do that because it's going to make windows use a lot more ram and cpu for no reason okay and then personalization that's your baby i don't touch networking in fact yeah i don't touch networking I don't know what happened there phone you can just leave phone as is devices if you got bluetooth i don't use bluetooth so i switch this off everything else just go through your own settings it's not really all that um, important and then system you can just go through these settings over here um, under notifications these are the only ones i leave on everything else i switch off uh yeah these settings aren't really that important right that brings us to the end of windows settings right guys for step number six we're gonna be using windows privacy dashboard it's just the extension of of privacy just gives you some extra features just to block windows from collecting your data as much as possible or microsoft uh actually microsoft will always find a way to steal your data but we're going to try limit that so what i want you to do latest what you're going to do is you're just going to extract that or zip that and just open it up and then you can just pull wpd to your desktop okay minimize that and just open this i've already optimized my system so i'm just going to show you what my settings are so in privacy i switch off everything so this is going to be on for all you guys in local group policy just switch everything off microsoft edge unless you use microsoft edge switch this off 
I definitely don't use that. Task scheduler, you can switch off everything here. Local group policy, just switch off everything. Windows Defender, no matter if you switch it on or off, it's always going to come back on. And then important, guys, like with private, in the Windows settings, uh, app permissions, just switch everything off, but let Windows apps access your camera and then let Windows apps access your microphone. Otherwise, it bugs out. Everything else you can switch off over here. And then in miscellaneous, just go ahead and uh, switch all those off. Windows update, just leave it. Okay, in blocker, what you're gonna do is, it's for you it's gonna, for you it's gonna look like that. So just go ahead and block telemetry, block third party applications like Skype, Bing and Live, and then block Windows update. Because we've already paused Windows update, now this is just the extra layer of protection where Windows shouldn't just update automatically in the background because that is freaking annoying. Right, and then this is the dangerous section of this of this little app. So if you go to uh, apps over here, so mine, are, I've already deleted everything I don't use, but there are certain things like Microsoft Edge, you can't uninstall it. Uh, I'm not saying uninstall Microsoft Edge. It's just, you'll see that once you try to delete things that you don't use over here, uh, sometimes Windows get, uh, won't allow you to delete it. So now in Windows Privacy Dashboard, in apps, you've got the ability to delete those, those things that Windows doesn't allow you to delete from apps. But guys, a word of warning. You do not want to uninstall Store Experience Host you do not want to uh, uninstall Microsoft Store. If you uninstall Microsoft Store, next time you load an NVIDIA driver, it's not going it, to, it won't install properly. It won't install the NVIDIA control panel and then you're pretty fucked and you're going to have to uh, reinstall Windows. <laughs> so just be very careful here. Leave Intel Graphics Command Center, Microsoft Photos I like. Le definitely leave Microsoft Store, NVIDIA Control Panel, Realtek, Store Experience Host, if you got the VP9 video extensions. I use Calculator for my benchmarks. And yeah, you don't want to get rid of these. All the other things are unnecessary. There are a whole bunch of, you're going to see a whole bunch of Xbox uh, apps and all those other things. Everything I have here, do not delete. Everything else you can delete. And that's the end of Windows Privacy Dashboard. Right guys, that's going to bring us to step number seven. And in step number seven, we're going to be disabling services that you don't need. And why are we going to be disabling services that you don't need? Let me just open up Task Manager. Okay, I've got OBS Studio running. So uh, this isn't a true reflection of my CPU or my memory. But you're going to lower your background processes. And more importantly, you're going to lower your Windows processes. So guys, what you're gonna do is just go to start and just type in services. And then you go to services over here. So guys, all the services I'm gonna show you now, I've already got disabled. You can see it's all disabled over here. And my Windows has been running fantastically. So it's perfectly safe. But what I'm just gonna show you quickly. Uh, okay. So in the description of the video, there's going to be services safe to disable and I'm going to include uh, this list. So just go through that list and then what you're going to do, and I'm just going to show you an example here. So let's say this is sysmain and sysmain is a very important service to disable. Um, so let's, for example, say sysmain. I've already got sysmain disabled. You can see it over here. What sysmain is, it's basically when you add slow hard drives, uh, the CPU uh, or, or like your CPU would create cache for all the, the 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 most used programs on your hard drive, and so that they would technically open up faster. But now that everybody's got a faster CPU or faster SSDs, this actually just creates a whole shitload of uh, latency. So definitely the most important service to disable is Sysmain. But for the example of this video, let's say, because I've already got Sysmain disabled, I'm just going to show you how to go about it. So let's say this is Sysmain. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to Sysmain, you're going to press stop, 
And then once it's stopped, you're going to go to properties and then from automatic, you're going to set it on disabled. Obviously, I'm not going to disable power because that's going to cut out my, my laptop. So guys, just go through that list that I provide or everything is safe in Windows 22H2. Just go ahead, stop the service, disable the service. And what it's going to do is going to lower your RAM usage and it's going to lower the, the Windows processes, which is going to be a whole lot less strain on your CPU and your RAM and your computer will love it and that services. Right guys, for step number eight, startup apps. I know in Windows settings, we already disable startup apps in the settings menu, but just make sure, go to the taskbar, open up task manager, click on startup over here. Guys, if you've got anything that's not disabled over here, disable it. And don't worry, it doesn't mean it's not going to work. It just means Windows is not going to automatically start it every single time you log into Windows. And guys, I do a lot of support over Discord. Uh, I see probably 75% of people don't do this step. And what you do, what's actually happened is every time you log into Windows, like, uh, like let's say you install the software that's completely unnecessary. Windows is going to open up automatically. So everything that is not disabled in the startup tab, disable it. Just to reiterate, it's not going to stop working. It just means Windows won't open up it's up automatically and guys you can save anywhere between half a gig to two gigabytes by just disabling this and restarting windows trust me right for step number nine we're going to use one error tweaker to change one or two things and you might be thinking when error tweaker for cpu optimization video to which i respond yes <laughs> so just open up your task manager and then not apps not background processes if everything is jumbled for you just click on name and just make certain everything is nicely, nicely organized so you can see the difference between your background processes and your windows processes so what i want you to do is scroll down or just drag this down until you get to windows processes and you'll see if you have not set split threshold above your ram amount service host you're probably going to have about 50 or 60 entries and the reason for this and i'll show you i've got maximum 15 or 20. you what you'll see is you'll probably have about 50 or 60 of these so the reason for this is let me just show you it's not tons it's about 15 maximum 20. so the reason for this is back in the day when windows was uh 32 bits the maximum amount of ram that you could have on your system was four gigabytes so to save space windows used to pack its services together but since windows 64 bit you don't need to pack it the services together because obviously you can use more than four gigabytes of ram what that does is it creates a whole bunch of service packets that you don't need so what i want you to do is go into your cpu optimization folder just extract windows or when air tweaker just pull this to your desktop and then run as administrator. I've already got it installed, so I'm not gonna do that. Just install it. And then once it's installed, just go ahead and launch it. And I'm not gonna go through all this, the possible settings you could be using here. I'm just gonna go to the thing I just showed you now. So under behavior, you're gonna look for split threshold for service host. And it's as simple as this. Just go set above RAM. And then once you say set above RAM, it's gonna say, reboot or i'll do myself later just go ahead and reboot and then once you boot back into windows and just go into task manager and then you'll see your service host has now gone from 50 to 60 service host packages now it's 15 20 and your ram usage will have come down as well merry christmas guys all right guys for step number 10 we're going to be installing intelligent standby list cleaner and I'm sure some of you are going, what? That's not a CPU optimization. Au contraire, my friend, it actually is. So I'll get to why it is just now. So just intelligent standby list cleaner, just um, run as administrator or actually wait, unzip it. Just pull this onto your desktop. And then once it's on your desktop, go to your C drive, program files. I've already got, got installed. Just pull it into a program files exit. 86 and then what you're going to do is 
it, once it's installed there just go and double click that and then it's going to open i've already got it installed so it's going to open up like this and if you got 16 gigs of ram put 8192 here if you got 8 gigs of ram put 4096 here if you got 32 gigs of ram put 16384 here so the list size is at least one gigabyte which is 100, uh, 1024 megabytes and then your half your ram amount so yet again 16 gigs put 8 gig here 8 gigs put 4 gigs here 32 gigs put 16 gigs here then select start uh, intelligence standby list clean and minimized and auto start monitoring launch intelligence standby list clean on user logon and the whole point of this is to clean up the standby list but also we're trying to force uh, a, a timer resolution of 0 0.5 because since 1709 uh, or windows version 1709 the timer resolution used to be 0 0.5 since then the timer resolution is messed up it's somewhere closer to one at the moment so this will give you quite a fair bit of uh, i've done a video on this this will give you a couple of extra fps in games it's a phenomenal little program what is it let me show you quickly so go to your task manager go to performance go to open resource monitor you can close this off just go to memory and you see uh this is your standby list so my standby list is currently at 2.5 gigabytes so let me just open up intelligence standby list cleaner so you see there my, uh, my my standby list so windows has cached 2.5 gigabytes of my ram i don't want it to be cached so then you just go purge standby list and make and it just purges it out and by automatically every time it gets bigger than one gig or you have less than eight gigabytes free uh, intelligent standby list cleaner every 10 or 15 minutes is going to purge that memory and guys this improve, improves your one percent lows in games so i highly recommend this this program all right guys and that's going to bring us to step number 11 and this is going to be my final cpu optimization thank heavens finally <laughs> so what i want you to do is just go to your start menu type in system configuration i've got a shortcut saved here so i don't need to do that so system configuration what you're going to do is you're going to go to boot go to advanced options and then select number of processes and then if you've got 16 cores you've got eight cores you've got four cores whatever just select the maximum one here and then press ok and then just uh, leave everything else, just apply. And then that's gonna ask you to, to restart your system. So I'm not gonna do it now, so the video is gonna cut out. So I'm gonna say exit without restart. And then as a bonus feature, Windows indexing. So just go to C drive, and what you're gonna do is go to properties, and then you're gonna untick. By default, it's gonna be allow files on this drive tab contents contents indexed so we're gonna un allow that or disallow it so just untick that hit apply guys it's gonna take about 15 to 20 minutes once it is done um, instead a uh, window search instead of indexing things once by default it indexes it two or three times what this is gonna do it's just gonna it's gonna reduce that in indexing amount which puts less of uh, a, a burden on windows anyways i kind of messed that one up but i couldn't give stuff to record it again i'm done with the video now yay right guys that brings us to the end of this goddamn video thank you so much for watching if you have any questions hit me up in the comment section uh, if you're still watching you haven't subscribed by now what are you doing with your life now's the time to do so and furthermore Guys, if you watched my a full GPU optimization video and you add it to this video, the CPU optimization video, it basically gives you a full Windows optimization. So I'm going to link that in the description of this video as well. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. It's people like you. Enjoy your Saturday. Cheers.